the Planning Commission meeting, the Brattleboro Planning Commission meeting for Wednesday, January 3rd, 2018 is open. Call to order. The first order of business is to approve the minutes of way back on November 6th. So, uh, would anyone like to make a motion to uh, accept the minutes? I will make a motion to accept the minutes. I will second that motion. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any no's? No. Okay. Uh, any announcements? I have an announcement that on January 18th um, at the Hinsdale Town Hall, there will be, it's at 7 o'clock, a public hearing to discuss the bridge replacement, huh. uh, the replacement of two bridges over 119. They're going to open up the town offices at 630 so that people can inspect the plans. Otherwise, you can make an appointment to go to Concord, New Hampshire. Mm. But I think I've also found some of them online. So anyway, uh, so that's... And what do you think? Has there been any progress? I don't... Not in the meeting. And the, our, our problem is also with the state of Vermont, correct? Continues to be, yeah. The plans you found online, is that something you can share with this group? Sure, I can send you. There's like a page that New Hampshire okay. DOT has set up. That'd be great. Okay. It's not. It's not complete. They had applied for a Tiger grant, mm -hmm. I think, recently, so there's some information with that, but it's not like a full set of engineered plans. Okay. It's still kind of conceptually looking, so they may have something different that they reveal at this meeting. Is, is the town question? responding to either state in any sort of organized way, like the town manager? I think final screening and some field position. Um, and in addition, we've made it clear to be trans that, um, that the proposed arrangement would be the, the arrangement proposed by VTrans, which is that the roughly 700 foot length of the bridge that lies between 142 Route 142 and the actual border with New Hampshire, so it's about, you know, it's just above the high water mark, that's about 700 feet. Mm -hmm. um, VTrans' proposal was that the town would maintain that, including the area of snow. And the town has made a formal response saying that under the circumstances, um, they are declining to take up that portion of the road because it doesn't service any other street in Brattleboro. So it connects a state highway to a state <laughs> highway. And the town doesn't drive it better. That's sort of the standoff, and I've not heard any follow-up on whether it be trans is going to either A, accept responsibility yeah. for maintaining that 700 yeah. feet, or B, um, change their mind with regard to the property that lies underneath the bridge, which is the old tank farm on the shores of the community. So the maintenance is an issue, the old tank farm is an issue, and the old bridge is an issue. Yes. Wasn't there also an issue with pedestrian and bicycle? Yes. Access, or was that yes. Um, Sorry, I think it was because we, we had wanted to be buying the old bridge or something. That, that's hmm. a little, resolve is the wrong word, but it's the outcome is, I think, clearer. The state of New Hampshire basically controls the old bridge and their view is that when they're done building the new bridge which they're financially and and you know project wise responsible for the construction of um, their intention was to hand over ownership of the old bridge to both the town of Hinsdale and the town of Brattleboro and um, 
both towns kind of complained and said, we don't have any money for this, like, what do you think? And, you know, unless you set up a fund or something so that we can help maintain it, we're not interested in having it. We'd rather have it knocked down. Um, and that was supposed to be the bike head alternate route right. so that you didn't have to mix it up with vehicles on the new bridge. It also turns out, and I haven't heard the resolution of this, but my understanding is that under existing federal requirements, you cannot you cannot use federal funds to build a new bridge that does not make accommodations for cyclists and pedestrians. Well, that's it's, pretty clear. So, but then you get this double. So then that's why the state of New Hampshire and the state of Vermont are completely uninterested in helping either the town of Hinsdale or the town of Brattleboro maintain the new bridge because they're like, we fixed our bike head problem. <coughs> <laughs> See you later, right? Um, and are Hinsdale and Brattleboro working together? Somewhat. That's nice. Yep. Yep. I think that I think the committee has been <laughs> the local committee made up of representatives, state representatives in New Hampshire and local select board in New Hampshire and others, and then state representatives. In Vermont and select board and local representatives in Brattleboro. I, yeah, so they don't necessarily see eye to eye on everything, but it's an effective committee and it's processed a whole bunch of decisions fairly effectively and being able to communicate with both state transportation departments effectively. There's another bike pet issue where the Friends of the West River Trail would really like some sort of. Um, right of way so that they can get further south on 142 so it's kind of um no it would actually go to you know the old georgia pacific building they want to get over there there's an old railroad truss i think they they would like some better right of way kind of through this bridge area to right and the, there's an existing building that is almost on the property boundary between the tank farm, it's on the tank farm property, but it's almost on the edge of the railroad property. And so, not quite wide enough for a human being to pass between the wall of the building and the edge of the property line. There's no fence there right now. And so, the question would be how and if you could figure out a, a path for a bike head path to extend the trail. And so, there was a meeting there. I want to say in late November, there was no snow on the ground. Um, maybe it was before Thanksgiving. It was before my Brownfields grant was due. So yeah, that's okay. good. Okay. Beginning of November. <laughs> 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 um, so, and that at that meeting there were New Hampshire State Highway Department representatives and VTrans and town officials and property owners. And representatives of the West River, Friends of the West River Trail. And so that was one of the things that that meeting looked at. And then the other thing that that meeting made clear was that there was going to be uh, an environmental. Was it an environment? I'm not sure which was the woman from B-Trans. It wasn't an environmental, but they were going to review the whole question of the impact of the project on that property, on that tank site property. And they were hiring a consultant to do that. And so we So it's an environmental assessment. Mm. Yeah, so I'm not sure yet. We've not heard who the consultant was. It must have been an environmental assessment because right. wasn't the point that they did an environmental assessment when they evaluated the alternatives, but right. they actually didn't do one specific to this uh, preferred alternative? Uh, I don't know. It could be wrong. Yeah, they may have to wait for that. It's not so. Well, I'm not sure it's. I don't think it's an environmental site assessment where they're testing. I think it's more the environmental. The history. Right. Different type of review. Yeah, I don't think we've, we've not heard who the consultant or the team was, but the, that was that was the major announcement of Btrans at the time. Right? The That's what I thought. Yeah, so, or feasibility study <coughs> on the tanks and. Right, because one of the questions that they had was. <coughs> The project calls for moving some of the tanks, but not all of the tanks. And so the question was, is it feasible to move 
just some of the tanks? And how would you go about doing that? And what do you think would be? So it's in some ways less clear than it was before. But would they be taking the whole property, no. but only moving part of the tanks, or just taking part? I think of the that's property? not clear yet. That's the part that's yeah. problematic. The, the, the and they call that a, an alternative. Yeah. They don't know what they're doing. It's a popular one with V-Trans. Okay. Yeah. We don't know what we're doing. Alternative. Yeah. To be determined. Yeah. Which is why I was intrigued by this meeting on the 18th because. Right. Not really sure. And the meeting is in his day, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All righty. Any more announcements? Not as good as that one. <laughs> Not really good much. Nah, there's no public for a public comment. We're going to not discuss the Brownfield program this evening. Get to that at another meeting. So let's discuss the draft downtown designation renewal application. So um, we have the designated downtown, and that's um, that's good for five years. The there are many ben benefits that come with it, including uh, the ability to get state historic tax credits for commercial buildings, facade improvement tax credits, code improvement tax credits, um, <coughs> technology tax credit credits. Uh, there's some priority consideration for state grants. There's nothing in our packet thing. about this, correct? No. no. Sorry, no. I did. I did send you the application, yeah. but I didn't print you off copies because it is draft and it was like fifty some odd pages. Yeah. So does our does the tax bill that passed still allow for downtown tax credits and all those these are state tax credits okay <laughs> yeah it's a good question just wondering <laughs> <laughs> it is yeah. a good question yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. um my understanding that there are certain federal tax credits that are at least preserved for two years what happens after that i'm not sure certain ones got preserved others and I'm not so sure about it. Bad exclamation. Yeah. Um, anyway, so we've been working on pulling together the application. It'll um, be going before the select board, I think, in February. It might first appear on their agenda in January. Um, the down, uh, DBA, Downtown Brattleboro Alliance, is the downtown kind of uh, organization that kind of is it any different from previous years? The application? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I've no. data. I don't think there's a significant Anything that we should know? <laughs> I mean, it's the same <laughs> as last year. Yeah. You know, yeah. Not, downtown's it, still downtown. It's still there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can I speak up? Mm -hmm. So I'm very uh, uh, interested in starting the dialogue of expanding the downtown. Uh, parameters and exploring that if everyone obviously is into the, the idea um, you look really worried right now. <laughs> 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 um, I'm sorry I apologize I'm, I'm new at this and I don't no. really know what I'm doing but uh, my focus is business and uh, the vibrancy of the business community in Brattleboro and I know it'd be kind of minuscule and not very substantial to expanding you know like considering like exit one to exit three out to exit two you know, would be, you know, mm -hmm. kind of awesome and be kind of like throwing, you know, a very small bone to businesses in Brattleboro. Doesn't it depend on census district, uh, census yeah. tracts? But, the, no, because there's only two census tracts full of Brattleboro. Oh, well, I yeah. just, I thought no. this designation was some sort of poverty statistics. And no. So forth. No. Okay. No, this is like the um, Main Street, the federal four-point right. approach Main Street okay. program. Um, so... Yeah, we've kind of talked about this, I mm. think. I think um, the, the exercise where we all had to draw a map of what we thought, what we was, thought was downtown. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think well, well, we, did that, we did that. We did that. Yeah. The that was fun. So for that this fun. particular yeah. program by the state, <laughs> yeah. um, they have over the years been pretty, uh, they're, they're looking to keep it really tight. Yeah. So And they yeah. define a downtown as the traditional central business district of community. Yep. Who's um, they? The DBA? No, oh. the state uh, no. Department of Housing. Yeah. 
I'd yeah. love to explore the idea, though, of expanding it beyond just the big buildings we have down there. You know, especially, too, like, uh, uh, my understanding of business right now is it's extremely difficult in Brattleboro. Um, and my personal experience, and especially the uncertainties and unknowns of taxes and stuff in the future. Like anything we can do for business in Brattleboro, even no, no matter how minuscule or small that this seems to be, like it could be a very beneficial to, thing to people. You know, especially small businesses, especially people that like feel left out or alone, or like if you're not in the club of downtown, mm -hmm. um, then you know it could be it could be helpful. It could be a nice. Well, the thing club to of do. downtown is kind of a mixed sort too, because then they. There, it's also an additional taxing for them, right? Yeah, yep. They have to contribute to... Yep, there's a special assessment yep. on... Okay, so let me back it up. So you, you don't have to have a special assessment and an extra tax on downtowns. One of the ways Brattleboro achieves and maintains um, its uh, membership of the downtown program yep. is, is to actually assess a special tax on downtown buildings yeah and then that money basically is operating budget annual operating budget for the downtown organization which promotes downtown um, yeah yep so in expansion one of the one of the barriers to expanding it obviously is convincing people who are not paying that special tax to to want to pay that yeah right so and what does that look like what is that tax uh, it's not it's not huge like one percent or the, point no, it's more. It's more than one percent. It's not yeah. huge, but it's not <laughs> inconsequential. Yeah, gotcha. Well, so what are the benefits of being uh, falling in the parameters of being a downtown business? You can get um, buildings in, and this gets back to the original kind of purpose and why there's a, if you like, a geographical limit. Mm -hmm. um, you can attract historic tax credits for the restoration and renovation of buildings in the Brooks House is a perfect yep. example of yeah. a big, you know, big yeah. use of those resources. This building could probably fall into that too. It's not a commercial building. I don't, I don't think was, we yeah, could. I just, yeah. <laughs> it could just fall. Yeah, it could just fall. So, um, yeah, so, so that's one of the major benefits. And then you get um, a higher ranking in review for other state-based grant programs. Mm -hmm. So for things like sidewalk improvement or a whole bunch of other things, we do better compared to if we didn't have a de designated downtown and a downtown organization. Yep. Then, uh, you know, it's, so that improves our access to state grant funds okay. for improvements. We discussed the boundaries of the downtown district as part of the 2013 town plan and yep. it came up a little bit mm -hmm. in the land use regulation discussion and it came up Dick de Grey when he was on the select board also was interested in reviewing the boundary limits. Yep. The advice we took from the state the last time around and you know, ironically, it doesn't seem to me like that long ago, but obviously I'm getting really old because it was the last time we did this, um, five years ago. Yeah. It's not the ideal time to discuss a boundary change when you're going for a um, re-up of the designation itself. So okay. what I'd say is if there was community interest, public interest in yep. reviewing the boundaries, Yep. That's a good conversation to have, and I think it's worth exploring. Yep. This is not the year for it because, you know, you've got this thing hanging in the balance, and everyone likes the whole thing to be neatly packaged and you no know, big questions. Yep. And so, it's sort of a um, the state. Yeah. Also, what I would say, I mean, when we were looking at expanding the boundary, it was kind of to bring it up to the common, like Linden Street right. and. Um, the a lot of the office buildings, the old historic buildings that kind of sit across the street place. from the common. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it already included those. I'm, what's the, the downtown again? Oh, the <laughs> yeah. so Here is a map. Yeah. 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 So, and I can tell you, I mean, not with 100% because I don't sit on the board, but I don't think that we could make an argument to bring it up Canal <laughs> Street. So they're really looking Which at this. Board? The, no, downtown, the downtown state board. downtown board. State downtown. They're really board. looking at compact, right. walkable, 
the built form. Okay. So these are obviously the brick multi-story buildings. Yep. They want smart growth, so they would definitely look at Putney Road as strippy, and they're probably going to look as, at Canal Street, even though it's like an older commercial yeah. like yeah. area pre-91. I, d I honestly I don't think this downtown program would yeah. be the right one. I can see that uh, I can see that argument absolutely. Like I you know okay. I I totally understand that. I just wanted to explore the idea of throwing it out to them to see you know because mm -hmm. most downtowns are you know like downtowns of actual cities are the know, size yeah. of Brattleboro. <laughs> yeah. I mean they you know and so it seems that like you know going up Putney Road and then down Canal Street. But and I even think could you know to do I that. think to yeah. address your point I think you know. We had a study a number of years ago, I don't remember, of all the downtown, mm. all, all the commercial districts. Yeah. And I think what you want to do is maybe to emphasize your and commercial district that isn't necessarily the downtown. Exactly. But to strengthen Not just that. mine, too, by no, the way. All no, no, commercial all, districts. You know, yeah. Pony Road, including, yes, it is right. very strip So, molly, so I, yeah, I think is, we've, yeah. we've had discussions where we've discussed the commercial yeah. districts that are not the downtown. Uh, we've had studies about them. We had a big Putney Road study, and then this other study that mm -hmm. studied all the other commercial districts, which maybe mm -hmm. you'd like to see, maybe yeah. fish them out. But now, but when we did all that, we yeah. didn't do downtown, and now we're going to focus on doing a master plan of the downtown. So, well, you're not weren't aware of that, so you yeah. might feel slighted. But yeah, I don't really. You have to take any, advantage. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's just the way I'm expressing. You just have to understand that there's this whole history that we started on the other commercial yep. areas first and are now going back to the, the gotcha. traditional downtown. Yep. So there's this other program that I think I had mentioned at some point. It's the neighborhood development area. Yes, I was going to say that. Yeah, and that is one um, that is designed to be within a half a mile of the downtown district. Um, the benefits there are exemption from Act 250 regulations, which for us isn't a huge one necessarily, certain projects for sure, like Red yep. Clover Commons did hit, did hit that, the hospital would, that kind of stuff. They and um, and land gain taxes, um, eligible for once designated reduced A&R review fees. So that must be water sewer, mm -hmm. um, those kind of permitting fees. So. It, we had looked at it around the time Red Clover Commons was right. um, interested, and we had, there were some challenges to actually making it work because our topography is a bit challenging and doesn't necessarily meet their nice definitions of what they're looking for. We um, were literally less than, you know, sort of like imagine that you've got something like it's pretty much like Sim City, so you should. Yes. <laughs> basically exactly like Sim City. It's basically like Sim City. <laughs> <laughs> Except you're playing with real beginners. All yeah. right, so not like a 12-year-old girl. Yep. They just would clean this whole thing up. Yep. Um, so you got to, I mean, because, you know, Brattleboro is on the Connecticut River, and then that's New Hampshire, right? So yep. it's not like the downtown is in the middle of a perfect circle with concentric circles of development evenly distributed around, right, yep. which is the ideal. Yeah. <laughs> So we got a credit for the area that's in the floodplain downtown, and we got a credit for the Connecticut River, because their model runs on some kind of, literally, a circle. Yep. Get the With point. the river through it. There's a river running through it, right? Yeah. But we were literally like two blocks short of getting it, and eligibility for a neighborhood development area at exit one. Yep. And they weren't open to stretching the rules it was pretty much like, you know, yeah. like with playing with a nine-year-old. I'm like, nope, it okay, says right no, here. No, no, yeah. <laughs> so you're saying that that, yeah. that opportunity isn't yeah. really an opportunity. Well, I mean, be, at that time, it wasn't it, well, anything it wasn't that we pursued. That was yeah. like three years ago when yeah. the program was pretty new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's worth it's worth exploring. And then the thing that we've done since then is the new land use regulations are in place, which identifies the Canal Street area as a neighborhood center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then and also West Brattleboro. West Brattleboro, yeah. and then also kind of for want of a better term, Lower Putney Road. So that area uh, around Top of the Hill Grill, yeah. um, back, set against, towards, to, to, towards downtown as, as far as almost as the, as the bridge, yeah. right? Um, as a, another neighborhood center. Yep. Yeah. So what I'd say is that as far as the land use controls and stuff that we've got in place, encouraging multi-use 
um, development and businesses and so forth in those places. Yep. That's in place. What the town hasn't done is really match up any kind of financial resources to support existing businesses or to boost business location in those yeah. in those locations, and that's something that maybe there's grants for that or something. Yeah, we should say. I mean, I think the town itself needs to look at that, and I think that we should yep. see grant opportunities to support that as well. Yeah, and thanks for saying that. I really appreciate it, and I I see that it says uh, ten minutes for. Oh yeah. no no no, 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 that's okay. That's just, that's an <laughs> estimate. <laughs> exactly. It's just so, an estimate. Um, I just want to say that at that that area north of, by the bridge on Putney mm -hmm. Road, there's a mannequin. On the, yeah. one of those machines. <laughs> I know it's freaking me out. And I went, I drove by several times, realizing, she's did, they, the did they sell those machines there, or is it a workout place that they sell the machines? <laughs> they sell I, the machines. I thought, I thought the whoever in the, the window. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. I'm looking through the window. <laughs> right. No, I came to work one morning, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> somebody's working out. And then I left work, and I'm like, somebody's she's still on the other side. And then, the, yes, then I realized, so oh, wait, I. that's a mannequin. Like, oh, yeah. God, this person's died. And, <laughs> and they just <laughs> propped her up. Because at some point, you know, I went past it, and she was upright. This, and then, the mannequin was upright, yeah. and then the next day, it sort of like slumped face down. Yeah. Yeah. Like, not a good event. Somebody's New Year's resolutions yeah. have already fallen by the wayside. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, no, so uh, I just wanted to open the discussion, and I'm still learning, as we all we all understand. Uh, and it does make me feel better to know that we have explored it. Have yeah. has there been any other public input from other businesses curious about joining the downtown? No, no, no nothing at all. No emails no. or anything. So how do no, we? No, but it might be really helpful for you to look at that study that we talked about the other commercial areas because I yeah. thought that was a really good study. Yeah, I mean that was pretty much public improvements, recognizing that at yeah. that time yeah. there wasn't going to be some massive, you know. Yeah. Redevelopment going on. Right. Like yeah, one, I feel like one of my whole points of being in this room right now is my the focus on business, you know, and like in Brown, right just like concentrating on that uh, because I'm I'm passionate about it. So uh, if there's anything that we can explore or do, and uh, anything I can like learn about the downtown uh, district zoning or whatever it's called, yeah. the parameters and yeah. that it falls in would be awesome. Yeah, we'll put some stuff or, together. Yeah, okay. or exploring other ideas and, and options for the, other in the, people. And even in the master plan, there's yep. a lot about that as well. Yep. Yep. exactly. And like the yeah. West Brattleboro, they definitely concentrate their efforts on coalescing the, yep. the, the business and exactly. yeah, West Brattleboro yeah. Association. Exactly. My whole thing though is like when it comes to like the square miles that Brattleboro is, it's a small town. You know, so it's like there's there's cities out there that are hundred times bigger than the entire town of Brattleboro. So why is our small town designation area so tiny? Like in literally like three blocks, you know, or I don't know if how many. It's blocks an interesting question. Three, four, I mean, five it's, blocks, it's you know, because that's how <coughs> most blocks function. Yeah, and there right. aren't other blocks that function in that yeah, way. Right. Exactly. Well, and I think it's the state's um, um, is there attempt any, to have maybe parity between towns or something by yeah. keeping it pretty. Is there any way then for us just to think about and start exploring of like including other businesses down Canal Street, up Putney Road, out Western Ave, in downtown? alliance functions and stuff like that you know just yeah. be you know like I think I, I I don't think so because I think you know there's the downtown and then there's other commercial areas and other commercial areas have their own unique qualities mm -hmm. that are just different from the downtown and yeah. I don't think that you'd benefit from the downtown alliance aspects in these other commercial areas because you know, what do they do? They they put up Christmas decorations and stuff like that. Yeah, which yeah. That means meaningless for you, you know. Yeah, and I'm definitely not putting up Christmas decorations. Right. <laughs> well, so I'm just, but uh, just, if there's any benefit, that I'm just curious about learning about yeah. the benefit of, yeah. you know, what does, if there's no benefit to being a designated downtown, then why are we doing it in the first place? You know, so there's got to no, be No, I think there's benefits for the downtown, but yeah, I don't necessarily exactly. for think there's going de right. de yeah. benefits mm -hmm. for yep. other commercial areas, and I, I think... Yeah. We can explore what the benefits, what benefits would be available, yep. and what you would cool. want to see for auxiliary yep. commercial areas. But it's not the same as the downtown. Yeah. Well, I think I'm not sure I'm understanding your question correctly, but I think anybody can be a member of the DBA. I don't think you necessarily have to. You be can downtown. be a friend. A friend. Or, sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which you know. 
you wouldn't be a voting some, member. Some lonely people that yep. decided to be a friend. If you get <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, Are you one? No. He's, he's, he's <laughs> ex-officio. I'm not a friend of somebody. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. Um, <laughs> you're ex-officio. Yeah, I'm, I'm ex-officio, and the emphasis is on the ex. Um, yeah. uh, and you can be a property owner and therefore have yep. voting rights and be an automatic member of, yep. of the downtown organization. Um, I think all I'm getting at now that I'm learning much, much more, and I appreciate that, is that uh, I think I'm just going to always be driving home focus on business, and I think I'm probably just warning <laughs> you now. <laughs> <fine>. you know? <laughs> so I thank you for, for listening yeah, to I think, me. I yeah. think it's a good question for us to ask about ways in which the town could be more supportive of directing business activity to things like the neighborhood centers, right? Yeah, exactly. The directing activity beyond just downtown also. You know, like there's so much focus on downtown and it's, you know, it's awesome and amazing because of the, the what it creates for a town like Brattleboro. But there's so much more than just downtown. You know, there's a lot more going on out there. So it's, that's what I'm, you know, excited about. So. Well, I think, I think too, I'm, I'm sure the state would love us to have another designation, so if we can make neighborhood <laughs> development area work, yep. yes. I think there would be no, you know, they would love that. They, Why would they, they love that? Just because they like to see towns like use yeah. their designation yeah. programs. Okay, gotcha. Because they get, yeah. makes them look good. Yep. Um, it's back to that SimCity thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think, you know. Which I've never played SimCity. Okay, I'm going to now, though. <laughs> <laughs> You know, one thing that in the land use chapter, I, I was asked to add a part about the kind of the neighborhoods. So maybe maybe we can add something in there about exploring the neighborhood um, development area. Um, but then maybe look at like Brad said, and maybe look at some other things right. cool. as well. Okay. Yeah. So no changes. This will be before the select board. You know, in the next coming months before it gets submitted. Yeah, is there a um, certain deadline that has to be submitted by? Um, March 4th yeah. or 5th, somewhere in March. March 5th, I think. And then um, it's on the agenda for... January 16th and then February 20th. And then the downtown board meets... Oh, later in, in March. Later in March. So it'll be on... So we'll know by April where we're at. Okay, so let's review the town plan chapter reviews. Starting with so arts and culture. These are, um, the plan here is to kind of get these before you for a second time, pull together an entire draft. draft. Um, I still have to go back through some of the other chapters. That's my task for the next two weeks. Um, make the edits and then bring a plan before the Planning Commission in February that you feel comfortable taking to public hearings. Um, so this was really another chance to kind of go through these chapters. Most of these had some little tweaks that needed to be made. For example, um, if we're in arts and culture first, um, is we this had. In this packet too? It is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Take this off. Yeah. yeah the f I'm, and I apologize. I tried to clean up the formatting. It's not great. I'm still working on it. Yeah, there were some taking it. Words, but yeah, fine. taking it from InDesign into Word. And it's just been a really. So when I read this online, there were like cross out structures with like words. Yeah. That just didn't come through in printing, but it's not. Right. It's not like different. If it was a strikeout on your online version, then that was deleted. That was text to be deleted. So I printed it cool. clean. Thank you. So in the arts and culture chapter, um, one of the issues the last time we had was the actions not necessarily matching the policies. Um, so I would kind of reworked those. You should probably re read through. Um, and then actually Josh, Jess and I had an interesting, Josh had some yeah. interesting points and Jess did as well um, about a part in the chapter. No. Uh, <coughs> Again, all about area <laughs> and space. Uh, what art uh, is happening throughout, so it's on the next page. 
Yeah, it's on uh, the... Well, it's not broken down. It's bullet pointed. The flip on, side there. Uh, yeah. Where art is happening throughout Brederboro, there are three concepts where there are higher co concentrations of art downtown Cotton Mill Hill uh, and West Brattleboro Village. So then there's downtown Cotton Mill and West Brattleboro. Just trying to think of a way to consolidate this whole paragraph or this whole thing into like maybe just like one sentence of um, the entire area being uh, a vibrant arts hub or all-inclusive. The town as a whole. Yeah, instead of bullet pointing downtown Cotton Mill and West Brattleboro. I think we should just combine those three locations. Yep. Well, actually, I'm not sure While about saying all of the town right. I'm not and sure also. Right, about yeah. the second one anymore. I mean, well, so that's kind of the one of the yeah, conversations. Yeah, so the, the, we my having. my issue with the Cotton Mill is it's owned by the BDCC, which uh, they they seem to be taking on like a new direction of where they're going with their programming and their mission. I'm not really sure. It's extremely confusing to me, uh, but I do know that they're currently uh, kicking people out of the building, especially artists, and so that's why I'm like, you know, kind of erring on the side of caution of like including them because. One of the ideas for us is attracting people to the area, and I don't want to be deceiving or misleading for any purposes. So it's like trying to figure out a way to exclude that just because of the uncertainties, you know, or unknowns of. I think while the Monk Jazz Center is located there, you yep. could always make an argument that it's like some little outlier of artsy activity. Yeah. It is. Accessing it though is yeah. is extremely hard. So I don't want people to think that you well, can just I, move to I Brattleboro. I must say that it's not just art that has a hard time dealing with space of the cotton. <laughs> yeah, no, there's a lot of there's a lot of issue right now that it's it would be best to err on the side of caution, and I don't want people to assume, you know, that everything is perfect, you know, and it's like if there's a way like there's a ton of potential in the entire town is like kind of what I'm getting at and like pinpointing these little things that are, you know, everything's flawed, you know. Is, uh, is the concern with the same thing? Is there a concern with that? Or? Yeah, there's a <laughs> I didn't know they were for everybody. <laughs> I'm just being so proud of myself. Don't eat a cookie. Don't, don't eat a cookie. Don't eat a cookie. Don't eat a cookie. I know they're organic. It's organic sugar. <laughs> hey, that's sort really of good. I think I'm just trying to understand it. So it sounds like, let me recap this and you tell me where I got gone wrong. It sounds like what you're saying is, um, if I were to summarize it more generally, is that calling out a specific um, facility like the Cotton Mill Hill uh, is maybe risky because things can change there. Yeah. I think this being living document. Exactly. And I'm and wondering if maybe. Um, Oh, sorry. I was just gonna say, I'm wondering if maybe maybe changing this to be, I, I mean, it's too vague, but saying something like, Brattleboro has several um, incubators of uh, art business because there are others. Yep. I think. Oh yeah. Maybe a little smaller and just sort of, sort of like trying to describe it. In that exactly. Way. And there's others popping and up. There's others neighborhood like neighborhood art sales yeah, and collectives exactly. and so forth. And like what Bre West Brattleboro is doing, what I what I. Uh, uh, see them doing is really great, you know, and like, you know, they're banding together and creating this thing, and it's like really cool um, for West Brattleboro, you know, and so it's like, this seems like it's really directed at really specific things, downtown, Cotton Mill, and West Brattleboro, when those, these are all three potentials and possibilities. You want it more broadly stated. Yeah, more broad, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, it yeah. also, I mean, NECA's built a building now on Putney mm -hmm. yeah. Road. So, I mean, so it's less And Fulcrum R yeah, is in West River. Yeah, yep. so I, I just think... And, like, the Stone Church has a bunch of really cool things yeah. going on yeah. now. Yes. And so I it's just like, think it's better yeah. to be more general exactly. and not pick out... Yep. So we could take all, all right. three out and yeah, then... Yeah, take all three out. Yeah, and so have, have it in... Exactly, so... an overall art boosterism... Sentence or to speak on what Jessica was saying, she's not here and I can't speak for her, um, but she is definitely curious and interested in maintaining it just because of it is still, you know, like the uh, Vermont Jazz Center is still located there. You know, so right. with common sense, um, it's inclusive of, you know, Cotton Mill. Um, I just err on the side of caution with it just because of. Uh, well, um, I'm realities. sure that I'm sure that Sue <laughs> yeah. will be able to figure something out that yeah. threads that needle. Yeah, I mean, I like the way that you kind of both put it—that there's like little incubators kind of all over the place, and yep. if you 
if we're not specific about just three places, hopefully I can give a flavor. Because Jess was even saying in her neighborhood, there yeah. you know there's lots of little arts activities mm -hmm. yep. going on. I mean, right. you see it in the Elliott Street neighborhood too. So and the majority we, of artists I know, uh, actually, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I'm no, so, go I'm ahead. Sorry. No, I'm kind of done. Me personally, the majority of the artists I know, they actually operate out of their houses. Mm -hmm. right. You know, so to be anywhere and exactly. Be yeah, I, okay, so we can work on that. <clears throat> I don't know if this informs you guys at all, but I mean, me and a few friends of mine who are in a residence a house up on Chestnut Street, which is up the hill from downtown, have been working on also trying to create a bit of a, an artist space, incubator, residence kind of thing. Exactly. Um, and we've also been trying to figure out how that fits into the way, whether it's business or nonprofit stuff or cooperative stuff works around here. Yep. Especially being somewhat removed from downtown or up the hill. Yep. It's kind of its own community a little bit, but close enough. And yep. Sort of. And it's hard to find your place, and it's hard to find someone to talk to about it because everyone's so busy or concentrating on downtown or whatever that, you know, you're kind of lost or floundering, floundering around. I don't want to say sure, you're well, floundering. We end, up, end up, you know, we've been looking for spaces to do stuff like at 118 Elliott Street. Yep. I mean, mm -hmm. the fact that Metropolis closed down means people are also looking for new spots to yep. do music performances exactly. and things like that. Yeah. Um, so yep. there's definitely sort of a cusp situation right now where people are kind of figuring out the next stage of the yeah. movement of these things. Exactly. And so my thing is, like, West Brattleboro is doing great. Cotton Mill's doing great. Downtown's doing great. Why there's so many other things doing great that it's, we either have to include everyone or, you know, <laughs> not <laughs> anybody. Right. Yeah. I like yeah. brevity. Yeah. What's so, that? I like brevity. Brevity or, or uh, <laughs> vaguity. <laughs> you know, like. We're also segueing into I think, the conversation that we had before, maybe before you were here, and, and I think we'll continue to have it just about neighborhoods defining themselves and mm. how the town can help work with them and support yes. that. Because that's yeah. just an organic thing that happens mm -hmm. with time. Yep. And um, yeah. you know, it's a good thing to be able to support that. Yep. Uh, help All right. So I'll give this a whirl. Thank you. Any other comments on that? We move to land use. Anyone have any land use comments? I see some dangling, I feel like it's school a dangling preposition, like 12.1.4, and there's no action. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's a dangling purpose. I was looking at the goals versus the policies and the action. Mm -hmm. And the goals go as far as waterfront waterfront areas, but the actions discuss uh, maintaining uh, uh, industrial uses. Land use. Land use, gotcha. So, I don't know, there's A, B, C, and D, there's four goals. And there's seven policies. And so I would just like the policies, each each policy to have a goal. Oh, you mean you want more goals? Seven. Oh. Goals mm -hmm. Hey, this is land use. This is it. This well, is the, what we're here for. The policies for. are really the most meaningful in terms of, like, goals are good for grant writing and, you know, the overall kind of thing. Um, the policies are used a little bit more with the Act 250 stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's why sometimes there are more right. policies. Than but isn't it, isn't it the classic land use policy goal to, to maintain residential neighborhoods? I just don't, I don't, I think they'd throw us out of, out of the master plan school if we didn't have as a land use goal, maintaining Brattleboro's residential neighborhood. We have it as a policy. Yeah, but it's not as a goal. <laughs> okay, so it shouldn't be a policy then, it should be a goal. Oh, well, these other A, so, B, C, and D are both. Okay. So we just found I always have a hard time with goals and policies, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> well, I just like to Professor match. I'm okay. just a matchmaker okay. so at be heart. Happy if, we, if we upgrade it, I want both. The neighborhood thing into a Now look, goal. look, you see. For example, D, increase and yes. improve public access to the waterfront. And then in 12.5, you have, you know, enhanced public access. And you, you, you know, you, you have kind of a matching goal yes. mm -hmm. and policy. You want to see a one-to-one -one between 
So we need one for industri industrial. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we, and we need one for residential. Yes, yes. Seems reasonable. Wow. Wow. Um, so I think Is there actually water in that container? Yes. Can I have some? That, yeah. You can. Yeah. Um, I probably need to get you a cup. Uh, There's a month over there. Yeah, you might want to check that mug. Yeah. I'm going to take you up on an organic <laughs> cookie. Thank you. No, there's cups in the in there. Oh, okay. Bad shape. We will tell you. Can I steal one? They broke them. Oh. How old is Ace now? Is he going to have He's just about when he's running around talking. Oh, my gosh. You must have had a fun holiday. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. So I also added text on the, the neighborhood part. I don't know. Um. um under six, uh, on page 126, maintain the integrity. That's kind of where my little discussion. Which page? 126. So, like social menus, interaction, sense of community. It, is there anything? Um, are we? Are we just as much as I'm like all four neighborhoods to find ourselves? Are we leaving that too open without direction? Like, is there anything that just at a town level we want to say is a direction that we want to tie back to, say, from the land use regulations or something that? You know, we've talked about um, residential character and things we want to see happen in residential. Is there an opportunity here to tie back to something direct there? Hmm. Or should we think of it that way? I don't know. This just occurred to me now, so I didn't think it through. Um. I, would, I would say just that the framing of this is somewhat opportunistic. Mm -hmm. And I think it was written around the time when there was a really active small group attempting to do some landscaping improvements at Exit 1. Mm, uh, this is actually newer. So I think it comes. It is. This is a new. But this. This is a new policy. This, the action? Mm. Seven, the four, actions, four, they're seven, both new. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's probably a little bit more out of. Yeah. The work, you know, that's yeah. going on with feet. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Um, I think it's still open in the sense that the town should find us supporting the, um, the sort of organic neighborhood groups that, that form and want to do stuff. But don't, I don't know if we've, if we've ever had a kind of discussion about how to, in what ways to support them. Right. Financially, or pats on the bank, or help you know, organizationally, you know. I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit because I'm not sure. Like, these actions might not be the best, and maybe there's more. I think on page 126, where I talk a little bit more about like what are the goals of our land use plan, and this is where I talk a little bit more about the residential neighborhoods. I do tie it back to the future okay. land use. Um, talking about the historic development pattern, kind of um, balancing off high yeah, density yeah, that, that, with... That was in the spirit of kind of what popped into my mind, was, was the tie back to the things in the land use regulations. Right. 
And so I don't know if that does it enough or... I, I don't know. I mean, I just, I wondered that just now as I was looking at it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't have the best sense of how this document is used to you guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, the thoughts that are generated during the meeting are just as valid as thoughts that you may have had before the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> or just as a <laughs> um, well, it must have been boosted by real organic sugar cane. Yeah, sure. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess that's that's exactly where I was coming from. Is you know if somebody's looking at just the bullet yeah. points here and then trying does to it connect to text? In this yeah, way does it connect to text in yeah. here somewhere in a way that it gives you like a direction about I'm applying for this grant and look, I can say here here right. it is right here at the top like it's at that level of importance. Mm -hmm. um, for example, I'm applying for a grant to get flowers mm -hmm. somewhere and you know does it tie back some here to beautify something you know what I mean like it's just that provide just yeah. opportunities yeah. for yeah them. because mm -hmm. a lot of people use this for various purposes it needs to be vague in that great way that planners make vague statements so I don't know if that's helpful okay we'll we'll look at that take it up all right no that's good I like the stuff. I also like the ones. Oh yes, I did add that. <laughs> Brad and I did a presentation in Pittsburgh about the oh, yeah. Whetstone charrette. Um, yeah, it went yeah. really well. Yeah, yeah it's well attended. Yeah, it was um, we did it with Dennis, who was the landscape architect. Right. Oh, that's right. so nice yeah, at the Brownfields good. Conference. Yeah. It's good. Thanks. It's good. Um, Rod and I were talking a little bit about one of the other sections that we're going to review is the flood resiliency, which is a required plan um, element by the state. And um, we, we talked a little bit more about whether it sits in this chapter or a separate. And we're, we're both having trouble, you know, inserting way too much into this chapter because, as Rod said, this was one that served us really well the last time so we're probably a little attached to it but I'm thinking a little bit more and more that it perhaps does sit belong in the land use chapter um, so um, you you might see a little you might see it sit in here the next time as I play so around why do you think it belongs in the land use chapter? Mm. Well, I think it's in the land use chapter well look if you look at the first goal of the land use chapter it talks about flood. Yeah. And so does the and second goal. Yeah. yeah. So where do I find that at then? The flood resilience yeah. chapter. It's, um, it's a whole different chapter. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, in it's there. Point, we'll yeah. keep turning. It's, it's keep totally turning. new because it's a new requirement. Yeah. Yeah, but if you keep turning, it's... Um, and it's not currently in land use? No, it's no. five pages. It's not currently, doesn't currently exist. It's totally is, new. Is the argument to have it broken out into a separate one? We just can't, because it's new text that has to be added, we just haven't inserted it anywhere yet. And the question is whether to insert it and not have to sort of blend it in the language chapter. And there are a whole bunch of actions. Right, so mm -hmm. kind of help. Like right, so it just extends that whole thing at the front of the language chapter. Um, yeah. Are there land use actions that this new text would lead you to, or? Well, there's definitely this whole Um, 12.2 on page 115 has a bunch of, um, actually N12.3 are all related to flood hazard. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, there's an awful lot in the land use about flooding, so what does this other chapter say that's new? That, that's new, well, it identifies our flood hazards a bit more comprehensively because there's more than just the special flood hazard area in the floodway. Um, there's dams and street flooding and that kind of thing. So I drew from the hazard mitigation plan that we have. Um, I mean, if we did sit this in the land use chapter, I think. Well, of course, at the very end of land use chapter, you have this special flood hazard area definitions and so forth. I thought, that, I, thought I had removed that. 
Or is the chapter on bomb cyclone resistance? Yeah. <laughs> 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 you could write it on Thursday. <laughs> I have a lot to say right now, but we're being recorded. Yeah, so. you're right. <laughs> um, well, that overlay district, that is an overlay district that we regulate. I, it, yeah, see, that's, it see that's what's clumsy about it. What's the benefit of having the flood resilience out of land use? Like, is there anything, like, when it comes to FEMA uh, money or anything? No, like that? there's no benefit. There's it would just be, a, you know, an organizational, we add a Chapter 14 or whatever so number it's it's it is. A yeah. Question yeah, it's kind that's of a readability question. I mean, it would make the land use chapter kind of long, and it might take it in a little different direction for yeah. a couple I think of pages. You've already, I think you've already gone down that road and made the land use chapter very flood Bloody. flood uh, centric mm -hmm. so it seems like a logical process to tack this on at the end or do you get back and hit it you know collect collect up all the stuff that's bloody in the land use chapter and deal with it as part of the design. well does this is the like state does the state want to see its own chapter for flood because they it, they it prescribed doesn't need it. The, it it doesn't need to be they don't it doesn't need to be its own chapter. I like the idea of it being a, its own chapter just so that we understand like the significance and importance of the you know the potentials of it in the future and you know what Brattleboro is going through. I like the idea of it just that way people are aware that it's in. I think in our minds. If you if you if you have a separate chapter, then you should definitely take some floody things out of the land use because right. it's kind of heavy. You might even want to lead with, you know, maintaining existing neighborhoods. <laughs> okay then. <laughs> I think I need to Don't get me wrong, I don't have a strong view on it. I, I like the idea of it being there, you know, just the, the flood yeah. resilience, the whole chapter on it. Just yeah. it's, it, I think it'd be important to... It's a big enough issue in Brattleboro. Yes, yeah. exactly. It's not, and, yeah. it's not an insignificant issue. Yep. That being said, we'll leave it to your yep. judgment. Yep. Sound planning Having judgment. a hard enough time formatting the other stuff. No. <laughs> now you got to redo it all. I think once we've made provision for... Maintaining existing neighborhoods, it should become clearer to us. I'll, I'll put everything in its rightful place, I'm sure. <laughs> no, somehow I'm just having these weird flashes of Maggie's. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mm. energy? Did I miss that? No, no we didn't. Energy was a formatting nightmare. Oh. Right, so we, we don't miss it at all. It's off the table for tonight. Rod did work with... Yeah. yeah, as far as the energy committee and the energy coordinator are concerned, they're reasonably content with its contents. Yeah. Um, and um, the somewhat separate decision about what, if any, organization, Brattleboro, the community should join to maintain uh, a commitment to meeting the Paris Accords goals mm -hmm. has been or has been resolved by the select board and we're gonna go with the Vermonti one that's been spearheaded by um, Nero Weinberger and others. So we're all for Paris? Yeah, as long as you don't use any fossil fuels to get there. Should make it pretty straightforward. Hmm. So All yeah, right. um, so basically, and the comprehensive energy plan, as you know, has more ambitious goals than the Paris than the Paris Accord. So by basically by committing to the comprehensive energy plan goals, which we do, we are implicitly also endorsing the goals set out in the Paris Accord. But separately, Brattleboro will become a member of. Climate Change Coalition. Great. 
So that's cool. So that's, and the rest of the energy chapter is consistent with both those things. So, historic and scenic resources. Are you already talking about them? So, you don't have a one here, I can't. Oh, oh, no. It just jumped out at me. It's a dangling oh, proposition. How did it jump out at you? Mm -hmm. Somebody pointed it out. Uh, I don't see it. My can't little symmetrical I don't arm. think we need one here. I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna fight. Okay. Ooh. This one. That's all right. <laughs> Um, this one, there is a new action, which is to explore the certified local government status um, or program, I guess, maybe not status. Um, that is a program we would need to do a couple of things. It's not much to actually get us to that, to be eligible for that program. And then we would have some funding opportunities opened up to us. With that funding, you could we could undertake things like... Um, structure surveys, historic structure surveys. We could um, possibly historic prepare district historic district nominations. We could um, do oral histories. We could do, you know, kind of different baby. projects that would promote Brattleboro's history and historical resources. So um, that's something we talked about. You went to a presentation on the CLG. I did. Right? It that was great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, there's, there's not too many communities there. in Vermont that have a CLG at this time, so it could be a good way to... CLG? Yeah. yeah. Certified local Certified government. Certified local. Sorry. Right. Jargony. So um, if you're certified local government, then you can have better access to tax credits. If you're certified? Yeah. Or not certified? No, it's a... It's for historic preservation purposes. Yes. 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 <laughs> Narrowly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. just a weird acronym because it sounds like everything, but it's actually no. Only yeah. in it's reference to historic yeah. historic preservation, preservation goals. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So we have we have historic districts. Yes, we do. Okay. Already, but consider establishing a local historic okay. district. Okay. So this different. this is different. So we have. <laughs> do we get a color map? I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Those are the fun meetings. We'll get back there. Yeah, yeah. So we have historic districts. We have four that are on the National Register of Historic Districts. We don't have a local historic district. So under state statute, we could create a local historic district. It may or may not have anything to do with what's on the state and the national registry. Now, We've been enforcing our historic review overlay district on the existing federal national register districts. So like downtown Clark Canal, Horton Homestead, and um, West Brattleboro Village. So any building that you know wants to go undergo an exterior change or if it's a new building, they're going to come before this committee that has some you know, skilled people in landscape architecture, architecture, historic preservation, and they're going to review the proposal and make recommendations to the DRB. One of the things that has come up is some, some people are uncomfortable with the fact that you've got this federal register and now, or not federal, you've got this nice federal recognition, and now all of a sudden because they're in that district, we are imposing a local, yeah, they think that, it could chill people's interest in being on a national register, you know, where it could just kind of be some ceremonial and pride of place kind of thing. And so it's been recommended that we consider doing our own inventories and figuring out what does the community, what are the structures that the community feels, you know, are important that we should preserve in the way they are. I mean, we've had a couple of cases where there is a contributing structure on the National Register, but if you look around the area, everything's been so heavily modified that to hold them to a certain standard is kind of like, it seems a little uncomfortable. So that's And the why properties the themselves, the property owners themselves, have to be comfortable with the designation because it imposes certain standards on them. Right. And so that's the idea of looking at a local historic district is kind of getting a little bit more public impact rather, or f feedback, rather than just imposing some regulations because they're part of a federal historic district. 
So it allows, um, so if I say that, let's see if I got that right, it, it allows um, people in the local community to have more input on what a locally designated historic district means to them, while still giving them the opportunity for some kinds of um, resources that become available. Um, well, or we would only really, Designating a local historic district doesn't necessarily bring any resources. The resources would become if we became a certified local government, we'd have access to some funding. Otherwise, it would be the select board deciding to, you know, set aside some funds for a project or that kind of thing. So, so what does local historic district do? So, are you probably just saying local historic district yeah. is just. I mean, it, it, it's a way of focusing attention on a particular neighborhood, but it in and of itself brings neither state nor federal resources to the, to, the na to, to mm -hmm. that area, either in the process of mapping it and doing the necessary research to establish its historic identity or improving it or it's just, um, I think it's for communities who are interested in commemorating mm -hmm. a particular neighborhood because of some, you know, some significance or strong, you know, like ethnic community, you know, a neighborhood that's strongly related to a particular yeah. ethnic group or something. Like that. So I'm thinking. But I think it's Sweetville. Yeah, right. Do, yeah. do you know Sweetville? Yeah, I was just going to say Sweetville. So Sweetville is of little significance or importance to very many people, even outside of Sweetville. Which is all of like ten houses, maybe. Yeah, maybe more. But you know, the history of Sweetville is interesting in the context of the SD organ factory and all that kind of stuff, right? It probably wouldn't rise to the level of being able to get state level or federal level recognition that this is a historically significant district. But if it gives that neighborhood an identity and then people want to participate in programs and activities around celebrating Swedenness. That's cool, <laughs> you know. <laughs> or because the people that are there in the community really cares about right. the Swedeville area, and you know there is some still right. some interesting architecture. Right. Then right. we could apply the historic resource overlay district to it, right. and use that instead of. You know there there are some buildings in the Clark Canal district. We we had looked at one that was heavily modified, but it still had to come through the process. If you if you had been really looking at that district, you today you know back in 1980 when that was that district came about, maybe it was contributing. Maybe now it's like not really, not really so much. So gives like a fresh set of you know the townspeople a chance to kind of look at the area and decide if it's historically important and significant. Yeah, and I guess what I would want to say is most of the time we focus on these things, you know, because we think they're important, but the step that we take about designation on, or whatever, the, de the decision to go for designation or recognition in some way is often to access state or federal resources, but I think in this instance, there's plenty of other reasons and other ways in which, as a community, we can celebrate the, yeah. the history of particular neighborhoods or even individual structures. Um, and weren't you saying, too, though, that if you had a local designation, then you'd get local buy-in to mm -hmm. the federal process. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Now you're imposing things on things that have federal designation right. without the having local buy-in. Right. Yeah. It's a way of, it's a way of, yeah, the sort of um, obtaining, well, identifying locally, locally interesting things that could then broaden the and local interest in, in historic preservation and broaden out the conversation about historic preservation. It's a bit confusing. Yeah. I think I'm with you. Right. I think All right. We done. <laughs> That's my management yeah. style. <laughs> Take your time. Um, we've heard a lot about the. Um, this is in my bag, but we've heard a lot about the um, uh, the um, native people.
in this area and there are historic resources related to that. Is that talked about enough, I think, in the cultural chapter that we previously or does it need to go back here? Um, there is a, if I recall, there is a brief mention um, on the page opposite the, the first page with, with the goals, policies, and actions, at the very bottom, it starts with an abundance of water resources and productive soils. Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry I didn't page number these. I will do that in the future. It does mention the petroglyphs. Yes. Um, It's not. It's not an extensive discussion. Right. Which president spoke at the Brattleboro Common? Was it Jackson? No. Were they lost? I don't think Jackson went north of the Mason Dixon line. Yeah, we would be recommended for Franklin Pierce. And it wasn't George Bush. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't George Bush. Because <laughs> that narrows it down. It's probably Teddy. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just learned that the other day that he'd be arrested. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I Jamie. voted for that. Uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, Isn't that yeah. the greatest? Were you not living here at the time? It no. Was a big was thing. It, what was it, 2009 or something? I looked yeah. it up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, That's so amazing. Funny. I wasn't living yeah. Was it 07 or it may have been 409? That's just I don't hilarious. know. I've been it accused of really moving here. Yeah. <laughs> so I could vote on that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, that may not be adequate discussion. Yeah, I, just, I just want to raise it because, again, as I said, it's not, yeah. my, it's not my bag. But I've, Yep. I think there have been a lot of feedback. discussions yeah. in the paper. Discussion and here. Yeah. Yeah. I probably <clears throat> could find could, contact and just reach out to them really quickly. Yes. It's a rich, concrete rich, guy. Rich Holshu. 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 Yeah. It starts with an H. <laughs> yeah. I think that the rich is I'm sure he has a concrete I think I probably plan. do too. I think I've emailed with him before. <laughs> <laughs> and our next meeting will be? I think it's February 5th. Oh. It's the first Monday. February 5th. Uh, yeah, do you want to actually give you a date for that? I don't have my. I can do that. We're back on the normal yeah, yeah, the first Monday. That was good. At the library here. Really yes, at the library. I'll be in the library. At 530. Yes. Yep. And so that is Monday, February the 5th. Groovy. Yeah. Okay. Motion to adjourn. I will second your motion to adjourn. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Can you tell me what time it is, please? What time is it now? Yeah. What time is it now? 655. 6.55. You can even have time to go to the lecture at the library if you want. Yeah. What's the lecture? I've forgotten. Best mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> advertised. Is that why we're not there? Or is the lecture there? It's a rigid She, she didn't know. think she was going to be out, so she didn't pay close attention. So, hey, have you got a key for your car? I do. Isn't that amazing? Uh, you know. That's great. Yeah. It's Tom. so funny. I told yeah. Lachlan, and even before I finished the sentence, he goes, it's got to be in the car. Yeah. yeah. I was like, and Tom found it, like, under, under, the, 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 yes. cool. under yep. the seat, you know. And, and, and now, my car, yeah. you know, when you go near it with the key, yeah. it opens. Yep. Have you been there? Yeah. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah, because you were at Marlboro. Yeah. Yeah, I was at Marlboro College before that. Yeah. Oh, I know. Oh, cool. You know Adam Weinberg or I've uh, heard of him. Yeah. And Max uh, Barksdale. I've heard of him too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Robert, people are awesome people. Yeah, for sure. It's a great space for collaboration. Yeah.